Well, reminding our listeners and all that, one of the things, the whole objective with the creation of DHS was to, you know, obviously we got sucker punched in 9-11. And with that is bringing the agencies together so that there is a stronger communication chain and a stronger, shall we say, a teamwork effort in uh, protecting, obviously, the, the, our, our country and our citizens and, and whatnot. So there's a lot of things that are going on with that. We're going to be talking today about the supply chain resiliency. So there is a new center that has been set up that I understand is under your purview. Uh, the, the supply chain resiliency center. Is that right? Yeah. So simply put, the DHS established this Supply Chain Resilience Center uh, late last year, and the idea is that we needed a center to lead and coordinate the department's efforts to, and this is where it gets important, to assess and mitigate potential supply chain disruptions, but also improve our ability to manage actual supply chain disruptions. So it's sort of that twofold mission. You know, I know that that's a pretty broad statement, but I think... um, you know, as, as, I, as I try to explain the core competencies of this new center, it's really to emphasize the fact that we, we want to be better at predictive analysis um, and we want to be better at integrated problem solving. So sorry if that sounds too wonky, but it, it really, I think, helps us differentiate um, you know, what it's going to do that's additive to just the it, broad array of capabilities and experience that we already have within the, the Department of Homeland Security and, frankly, that we have um, across the, uh, the interagency. I love the, uh, the fact that you're looking at it, utilizing data for analysis to try and predict, all right, where's a hot spot? What about those situations where maybe we, the importers, might have control over? And I mean, uh, very specifically, I'm just going to go right to the point, is with uh, forced labor. I mean, um, I, I, it doesn't sound like that that really falls into the resiliency or anything, but like, are, are how are, I, I know it's it's addressed by DHS, but it, how does that work into this? Like, it, or would it even work into it? Because I mean, technically we need to be tracing back and, and finding out if there's forced labor or anything, but uh, how, how does this work into like the program if it even does? Yeah, it does. And, and I think that's an interesting um, reason why we decided to put this office here at DHS headquarters. Um, you know, we're building upon new authorities that were given to DHS under, I think it was the um, NDAA from, from last year. Um, where they're really giving to DHS policy the specific uh, express authorities for economic security. And so I see forced labor as really a, you know, a, an example of uh, a shifting dynamic and landscape that we're certainly watching at the Supply Chain Resilience Center, and it's sort of feeding into our decision making. You know, foreign investments is sort of another. It is an area where DHS, among others in the interagency, are constantly assessing information about, you know, uh, uh, investments made by foreign entities into, you know, U.S. businesses or um, into real estate that might be right next to a major port. And we're looking at the security implications of those investments. And then on the other side, to have all the great information that CBP has about the goods and the um, of the businesses that are coming across our borders to be over here in CBP's ACE. And then to have all of the information that CISA has about critical infrastructure owners and operators and risks to be sitting over here. And then to have all the information that ICE has about bad actor networks and counterfeiters and folks that are um, you know, moving drugs in and out to sort of be sitting over here. We really want to pull all that those uh, signals into sort of a, a centralized framework um, or a centralized hub uh, and, and to be able to then draw even better conclusions about where the risks are and then have, so that's the predictive analysis piece, but then also have the structures in place to do something about it. What are some things that, you know, the public, if you will, or the private sector could do to help your, uh, your center and help yourself? In particular, I'm thinking if there are people that have some ideas that would like to submit some uh, things to you or, or whatever, what can we do to help you? 
Yeah, I'd love if you, um, I, I'd love folks to be reaching out to me and my team directly. We are very much in the taking ideas on board stage. Um, we're piloting um, a, a bunch of new capabilities to just figure out what's out there in the commercial space for sort of AI analytics and whatnot. You know, our big goal, we've got a really um, interested team, folks that we're actually at the um, the created uh, things that uh, I think that was called the U.S. Digital Services at the time. So sort of these bringing tech experts from the private sector to help DHS really try to be at the cutting edge of innovation. Mm-hmm.